Hello and welcome to this video about regression in Excel. We're going to talk about how to perform regression using the analysis tool pack, calling the analysis tool pack from VBA. We'll briefly take a diversion into the linest function, and then I will show you how to calculate all of that stuff using Python and Excel. Let's get into it. So to use the analysis tool pack, we need to go to the file menu and then options. We need to go to add-ins. Excel add-ins, and we need to select the analysis tool pack and the VBA version and click OK. Once we've done that, you can see I've got some data here for advertising spend and sales. We're going to go to the data menu, hit the data analysis button that loads the analysis tool pack menu. I'm going to select regression, hit OK. And in this box, I am going to select sales as the Y axis, Y range, I should say. Advertising spend is the X range. I, will, I don't have labels. The constant is not zero. I do want a confidence level and I want to output to the current sheet. When I do that and hit okay, you will see that it gives me this model information. That's all well and good. However, it's static. I can't refresh this by right clicking on it and hitting refresh. There is no such option. So let's have a look at some other options to refresh that automatically. Okay, so it turns out we can do everything that we just done with that user interface using VBA. I have taken a screenshot of the user interface to remind us of the parameters that we selected in that form. Uh, and now we're gonna write some VBA code to mimic this behavior. The first thing to do, of course, is create a sub procedure. So we'll say public sub run ordinary least squares regression. And all of this is happening on sheet one. So we want with uh, this workbook dot worksheets and sheet one, this will avoid some duplication. The add-in is an XLAM file, and we can run that add-in like we can run any application from VBA using application.run. So it's application.run, and then the name of the add-in is just something you need to remember, which is ATP VBA EN dot XLAM. So I guess that's the analysis tool pack VBA English XLAM. And then I want to call the regression function, which is regress. Now there are a number of parameters here. It doesn't explicitly name them in the interface, but I looked this up earlier and the ones that we want are input Y range, which is the first parameter. And so we're going to put dot range C3 to C12. And that will take the uh, this workbook worksheet sheet one and attach to it range C3 to C12, which is the sales information. Then we are going to do the same for the X range, which is in column B, B3 to B12. And we, the next argument is the constant. Now this box here, where I, earlier I clicked constant is zero equals false. If you select that, it will force the regression line to go through the origin. And we don't want that. We want a constant in the regression. So that is going to be set to false. And that's the next parameter. So that's false. Oops. False. And the next parameter is labels. Now I selected from B3 to B12 and C3 to C12. So I haven't selected row two. So labels is false as it was in the form where we didn't select labels. Uh, if we had selected row two, then we would have put labels equals true. So it ignores it, but nevertheless. Uh, and the next one is conf confid. There's a, an argument called confid, and we selected the confidence level of 95. That's the default. So I select true here, type it properly. And then the last point is just to select where we want the data to go. And we're going to put it in cell E2. So we want date.range. Uh, E2. And I think that's it. So let me delete or move this out of the way because we're going to put some data here. When we run this, 
it will perform the regression and put it in this range here. So press play and there's the regression. And you can see that it's done exactly the same as the form did. But the cool thing about this is you can now attach the sub procedure to a button. You can refresh it as many times as you like, make some changes to the parameters, maybe, maybe even place the parameters in cells, but the data are still static on the sheet. And it always comes out in this format. So it's always this table. It's always these lines. It's always SS, MS, F, significance F. Uh, and if we don't need some of it, well, too bad. You have to have it. So we've looked at how to use the analysis tool pack using the form. And we looked at how to do it with VBA. Now let's see what we can do with this linest function. So we'll type equals linest. And the first parameter is known Ys. In our case, this is the sales data. Then it's known X's, which is the advertising spend. And then we see the constant uh, parameter. And the argument that we want is true. We want B to be calculated normally. And the last argument is stats. So we'll, we'll do true here uh, to get the stats and see what it gives us. Okay. <laughs> We've got a spilled array with some numbers in it. No labels, really not much indication of what is what. Um, but let me transpose it and then it might become clear, a bit clearer. Transpose. Uh, and I'm going to put choose rows around it because you can see here 143.87 is there and 0 0.65 is there. So these are the coefficients for the intercept and X variable one. So let me put choose rows around it so that we can flip this around. Um, maybe there's another way to do it, but I'm going to use choose rows, choose rows, and I'm going to do um, two and one. So that flips it around. Let's move the whole thing over here. So, so these are the same as these, you get the coefficients and you get the standard errors. And I believe if you've got more than one X variable, you will get all of the same for her, as many variables as you have. Now we have 10.7, 0 0.98, uh, 10.7 is here. So that's, this one is the standard error and 0 0.9897 is here. So that's R squared. So we've got standard error and R squared. We've got eight degrees of freedom for the residuals and 772.24 is the F statistic for the regression. Then finally, we've got 918.78, uh, which is, where is 918.78, is the sum of squares for the residuals, and 88691.21212, which is the sum of squares for uh, the regression. It's also the, I forget what that's called. It's the sum of squares for the regression. So you get some stats. That might be enough for you. And if you can remember all of that, good luck. Um... I personally don't prefer this method. Uh, it doesn't give me as much information as all of the rest of this. There are other functions to get the T stat and the P value and the confidence interviews inter <laughs> and the confidence intervals and all of that good stuff. Uh, but with the Linest function, this is what you get. All right, so let's look at how all of that is done in Python and Excel. I've got the Excel Labs add-in. I'm using the Python editor in there um, and I'm going to click add Python cell in H1. So what we need to do to do all of this is import stats models dot API as SM. The next thing I'm going to just copy from my notepad um, is to grab the data into a data frame using the Excel method. And we, we can run the regression like this. We'll do SM dot ordinary least squares. And the first parameter is the Y values. So that's the first uh, column one in the zero index columns of the data frame. The second parameter is the X values. Now, if we want it to behave in the same way that we have the constant and it's not forced to go through zero, then we need to use this SM dot add constant method around DF, uh, the first column, which is zero indexed again of the data frame. And that closes the method and then we run fit. And what that does is it will give us the results of the ordinary least squares regression in this results parameter. I'm going to just put this results dot summary to begin with, and that will show us a summary of what that method does. 
So this is what we get when we run the regression. Very simple, few lines of code, and we get all of this stuff. But this stuff is the Python way. This is actually just a bunch of text. Uh, it's not going to spill well into an Excel spreadsheet, and it's not exactly the same as this. So we can't tell whether it's doing the same operation just by looking at it. I can press Control X to get rid of that line and change this. This is still Python objects and just change this. And you can see that the result of this statement is regression results wrapper. First of all, add a Python cell in H4. Regression statistics. Statistics. And the regression statistics is going to be some data that we can put in a data frame so that we can spill it to the workbook. We will define some column names for our data frame and we'll do regression statistics like this. And we want multiple R, Oops. R square, adjusted R square, standard error, and observations. That's going too far. Put a comma there, go to the next line. And the values for this, this is probably the interesting part, is going to be a list of some calculations. First of all, uh, multiple R is the square root of the R squared statistic. So let's put MP dot square root, MP is NumPy, and we're going to do results dot R squared. Oops. That is the first uh, output statistic. Second of all, it's just results dot R squared. That's just callable from pressing results dot, and then you can find it. And then we want results dot R squared adjusted. And the next one is the standard error. And the standard error is calculated like this, MP dot square root. And results dot MSE, residual ID. And then the last one is the observations, and that's just int results.nobs. Okay, so that's the regression statistics, which will be sufficient to build a table that looks like this. Let us do that now, and we will just do pd.dataframe. So that's a pandas data frame and regression statistics. We press, oh, let's change this to Excel values so that it spills to the grid. And we press control enter, and you can see that that is exactly the same as that. So we have taken this regression results from stats models. And rather than just using that very dull and very messy summary method, we have built a data frame that replicates the analysis tool pack uh, output. So it should come as no surprise then that we can similarly build the ANOVA table and the coefficients table uh, in the same way. So let's just do that now. In fact, rather than you watching me type, I am just going to paste the code from another window. I'm going to add the Python cell into LE22. The ANOVA table is this. You can see that we are creating the ANOVA column regression residual and total. The degrees of freedom are one for the regression. That's always the case. Uh, and then the degrees of freedom res ID from the results object, and then the sum of the de degrees of freedom for the total. Then we've got the sum of squares, the mean sum of squares, the F statistics, and the significance of F. Now this will create a table in the same format as this ANOVA table. So let's control enter. Let's first change that to Excel values and then press control enter. And you can see that it has produced the same table as the ANOVA table very, very quickly. Let us do the last one, uh, add a Python cell, get the code from the other window, which is wonderfully named, as you can see. Output coefficients, standard errors, T values, P values, lower 95 and upper 95. Note that they are all pulled out of the results object. You just need to know the names, read the documentation. It's a illuminating experience. Change this to convert to Excel values, press control enter, and there is the coefficients table. With just a little bit of effort, we can replicate everything that the analysis tool pack does with Python in Excel. But the important thing to remember 
is that with Python in Excel, we don't have to have it in this format. I've just formatted it like this so that we can see that it does produce the same result, but we don't have to have it in this format. And we don't have to pull out the F significance and we don't have to get the P values or the T stat. We can pull out the specific statistics that we want. So the very, very last thing that I want to show you in this video is a way to simplify all of that code writing so that we don't have to do it again and we can pull it out whenever we want in a refreshable way. I have created a new sheet and on that new sheet, I've created a Python cell in cell A1 and in A1, I have defined a class that takes all of the code that we just talked about and wraps it into a neat little package with a nice little bow so that we can call the regression table, the ANOVA table and the statistics table very, very easily. And let's talk about how it works. So first of all, in this cell, do the import. That's important. Every class that you create begins with lowercase class and then a class name. Python's convention is to use title case for class name. So I've put analysis tool pack regress. And in each class, we need an init method. The init is what happens when you create a new instance of that class. We always have a self so that we can refer throughout the code to the properties of that instance using the word self and then any additional arguments. So in this case, I've just got X and Y. Y is and X are passed directly into that fit method that we saw earlier. So when we create a new instance of this class, it instantiates this self.results property by assigning to it the results of the fit method. Similarly, it is it instantiates this regression table property as the data frame that we built before. The same thing happens for the ANOVA table and the same thing happens for the statistics table. There are then three methods to pull those uh, tables out of the class instance. So the, the code is exactly as it was before. I'm not gonna go through it again. What we can then do is very easily, without a lot of typing, get the regression table, get the ANOVO table, get the statistics table. They come out as data frames. We can slice them. We can remove columns, add columns, additional calculations, transform them, do whatever we want with them. So that is the definition of the analysis tool pack regress class. All right, so we've got our new class. Now let's use it. Create a new Python cell, do it the old fashioned way equals PY. And I am going to do, what am I going to do? Regression equals my new class. And I'm going to take the data frame from the other sheet. Uh, the first column is X and the second column is Y. And that will give me my analysis tool pack regress instance. Let's create another one to get the regression table. And we will just say uh, regression dot get regression table. Control Alt Shift M. There's my regression table. Let's do the same for the ANOVA. Regression dot get ANOVA. Control Alt Shift M. And the last one for the statistics and um, PY regression dot get. And that's it. Very, very quickly, we've created a class. We've added some functionality to return the statistics in the same format as the analysis tool pack. They're in data frames. They're in separate ranges. They're spilled ranges. We can now do what we want with them and they will refresh when the input data is updated. That really is it. Thanks for sticking with me. Have a great day.